Romans chapter 3 verse 30 seeing it is one power which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith do we then make void the law through faith God forbid yea we establish the law I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rakakwadash double honors to my apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well salutations to the lord's whole four elect scattered abroad all right i'm the brother ties of war back at you again with another lesson and the title of this lesson is do we then make void the law through faith do we then make void the law through faith all right and um i was watching um a couple of brothers earlier and you got these two demons all right from uh i guess they got kicked out of the camp in the gms trinidad and they was you know basically teaching that you don't have to keep the laws of the most high <laughs> and um those who have understanding we know that we do you know it's a thing of uh first off believing in yahweh bashim yahweh shai all right then getting the knowledge of the Lord. And once you have the knowledge of this truth, you know, it's automatically you're going to keep the laws. Okay, but we're not saved by the laws. All right, now this could be a stumbling block to those who, who just can't get it. Okay, and they wrestle with the scriptures like these uh, Christian churches do. But it's really clear, it's really, you know, just simple all right let's say you are in your gentile ways and then you believe in the lord and you start following the lord you start praying to the lord and you start to change your ways you're gonna keep the laws all right you're gonna rehearse the righteous acts <laughs> you're gonna govern yourself in this godly manner which the laws were set up to govern our flesh you know to not make us as wild beasts like the other nations you know, we had law. We had order. That's what ordinances is. You know, we did things with decency and in order. Okay? So, uh, this is Apostle Paul in uh, the book of Romans chapter 3. And I start at verse 28. It says, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the power of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one power which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. All right, so Paul tells you here, it's no confusion. He said, do we make void the law through faith? God forbid, meaning no. We establish the law, meaning we establish the order. You can't have righteousness without order. Okay, you can't not have righteousness without order. You know, when, when um, the tempter, you know, Satan or these demons, the left-hand side, the angels of the Lord, when they come in your presence, they do what? They cause disorder, confusion, you know, so that what? You can go off, you know, so that everything is dramatized in a negative way and you're not thinking straight and you break the law. But it's our job to be humble, to be wise and to learn the law so that we can know what is right and wrong. All right. Verse 29, it says, is he the power of the Jews only? Is he also is he not also of the Gentiles, which the Gentiles, which the Gentiles are Israelite foreigners, all right, which was Hellenized Jews, Jews who spoke Greek, that carried carried the Greek customs, the manner, and their way of life, because they believed that they were Greeks, but instead they were actual Israelites. And these Gentiles that Paul is talking about, they the ones that believed in the Lord, Yahweh Shai. 
Okay, they believed in his resurrection. They believed that he is the word in which the scriptures speak about. All right, and gave his life for the Israelites, starting with the elect. Okay, and that's for another topic going into the Gentiles. But that's simple. There, uh, therefore, who conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law? Yeah. What are you going to break all the laws and you're just going to say you have faith? That's the uh, confusion and the lie in which Christianity teaches that it's okay for them to do whatever they want. You know, to eat crab, shrimp, lobster, and pork, but go to church on Sunday and God forgives them. And that's, that's just straight up stupid. All right. It's not even logic. Okay. When you use common sense. The Lord, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, he did not die for everybody to do what they want. First off, he didn't die for everybody, okay? He died for his people, starting with the elect, okay? And he did not die for them so that they could be loose from the law to do whatever it is they want. You know, that would defeat the purpose of the Lord even destroying uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. He sent the prophet... Uh, uh, Jonah to Nineveh to prophesize. Okay, he sent the uh, uh, prophets to Israel, Elijah. You know to uh, to to condemn the Israelites, Samuel. All right, it would defeat the purpose for the Lord to have prophets and to speak to the Israelites. And to warn them of the calamity and troubles that will befall them, lest they repent. All right, and that's just using common sense. Okay, so, so I want to move on and um, grab a quick precept in the uh, book of Matthew's, chapter five, and uh, start at verse thirteen. And it says, "Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost the savior." Wherewith shall it be sorted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. It says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking, all right? This is in, written in red. So we know that this is the Lord speaking. He says, Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets see because if you destroy the law then you destroy the prophets okay like i said you know a little earlier you know what, what purpose was the what need of the prophets what purpose of a messenger from the most high to uh send forth a message he said think not that i've come to destroy the law or the prophets i am come i am not come to destroy but to fulfill which the Lord has come to do what? Fulfill prophecy. Okay? Because he was the word. Made flesh. Alright? And um, I'm going to come back. Let me get a quick precept. To prove the Lord has come to fulfill. This is Luke chapter 4. And verse 14. I start here. And Yahweh shall returned in the power of the spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogue, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him a book of the prophet Esaias. All right, which is Isaiah. It says, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. 
he have sent me to the to he have sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are abused. All right, I wanted to read the precept in which Yahweh was actually reading from in the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 1. It says, The Spirit of Yahweh is upon me because Yahweh have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the openings of the prison to them that are bound. All right, so Yahweh Shai. Okay, came to do what? To fulfill prophecy. Okay? And this is why he read from Isaiah 61 and 1, because Isaiah was was uh prophesizing of Yahweh Shai to come. Okay, who's gonna bind up the brokenhearted? Yahweh Shai. Alright, which he came to give us grace uh from the law. Okay, not that he came to destroy the law, but he came to do what? To fulfill. He did not come to destroy the prophets, nor the law, but to fulfill, fulfill prophecy. So here it is, clear as day, the Lord is telling you who he was sent to, what he came for. All right, first off, he said, let's read it again. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Who's the poor? The Israelites. <laughs> okay. It says, he have sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives, it says, and recovering of the sight of the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. So he didn't come from the whole, come for the whole world. All right. He came for his people, starting with the elect. Verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting on him so here it is the lord you know doing what he do he went into the synagogue he opened the book and opened it right up to the uh to isaiah and he read all right so when he says verse 19 to preach the acceptable year of the lord because the lord is on the scene okay he's letting them know that he is him all right it says and he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down in the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting on him. So everybody was looking at him, you know. Now here's the point, verse 21. And he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. So you see, the Lord came to fulfill, all right, fulfill prophecy because he was the word made flesh. All right. So, you know, I want to. Let's go back into uh, Matthew's real quick. And then I want to grab some precepts. Matthew's 5 and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall and no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. All right. So now, um, okay, I'll start with some precepts in the New Testament first. So even now in the New Testament, Yahweh Shai even spoke of keeping the law, keeping the commandments. So how could the commandments be done in a way with? Okay. So this is uh, Matthew chapter 19. Excuse me. Matthew chapter 19, verse 17. It says, And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is the Most High, Yahweh. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. See? So here in the New Testament, Yahweh Shah himself, the Lord, he hath said what? Keep the commandments. So how could the commandments and laws of the Lord be done in the way with? And that's why I read Romans 3 and 31 with Apostle Paul. Okay, let me go there real quick on um, this quote. Right. It says, do we then make void the law through faith? 
God forbid we establish the law, which is order. Okay? Yes, we're not saved by the law because we're in sinful flesh and we're programmed to go off, but we keep the law to the best of our ability. Okay? And, oh, I got a precept for that. The Lord don't give license to sin. And I'll get that in a minute, but, all right, do we then make void the law through faith? So since we have uh, the gift of faith, which really faith is a gift, okay, uh, from the Heavenly Father. So not everybody has the gift of faith. So through the faith and the gift that we have of the Lord, do we make void the law? No. Okay. The law still stands. All right. So now let's move on and go into the book of John chapter 5 and verse 14. It says, uh, Afterward, Yahweh Shai, finding him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. So when Yahweh Shai was healing the lame, the blind, the sick, the dumb, he told them to sin no more, because it was sin, all right, that caused the judgment to come upon them, all right? Judgment came upon us as a nation. Okay, this is why we go back into Deuteronomy 28 and 15 and on down. It talks about the curses that was going to come upon us for not keeping the law. And just as well as the 28th chapter in the first verse, you could read about the blessings that we would receive if we kept the law. But obviously, as a nation, okay, from Jacob, all right, the children of 12 tribes of Jacob, 12 tribes of Israel, we have sinned. And this is why the great judgment came upon us to be to be carried from one continent to another and now you know the boat and the heart of israel is mainly in america but we're scattered through the four corners and that's why there's a great deliverance a second deliverance that's coming all right to the lord's people starting with the elect all right so i'm gonna read it again afterward yahweh shai finding him in the temple and said unto him behold thou art made whole sin no more lest a worse thing come unto thee see so you're not supposed to be willingly sinning, man. Okay. Now let me get John going to the 8th chapter. This is John 8 and 1. Yahweh Shai went unto the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him. And he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the miss they say unto him master this woman was taken in adultery in the very act now moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned but what sayest thou this they said tempting him that they might have to accuse him but yahweh shai stooped down and with his finger wrote in the ground as though he heard them not so they was tempting the Lord to condemn him, to trap him up, you know, to, have, to try to make him go against the law. All right. Yahweh Shai wasn't against the law. Matter of fact, he was perfect in the law. OK. So verse seven. So when they continue asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground and they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one beginning at the eldest even unto the last and Yahweh Shai was left alone and the woman standing in the midst when Yahweh Shai had lifted up himself and saw none by the woman he said unto her woman where are those thine accusers have no man condemned thee she said no man lord and Yahweh Shai said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. Because Yahweh Shai came to give repentance. He came us to show, he came, all right, uh, the word in the flesh to give us that chance of remission, all right, back to the Most High. So he didn't condemn her and put her to death because of the law. He came to fulfill, as we read, man. Okay, so let's, uh, Let's uh, get another precept. This is in the book of John again. John chapter 14 and verse 15. It says, if ye love me, 
keep my commandments. Plain and simple. All right. The Lord Yahweh did not teach uh, everyone to not keep the commandments and to go against the commandments, man. So you'll be a fool to teach those to teach the Lord's sheep to not keep the commandments. And you're going to be destroyed behind that. Now you are a false prophet, you know, you know, and this uh, lesson was inspired. I was watching earlier, brother uh, from the Trinidad. He was going in on those two guys, man. You know, guys are wicked, man. The adulterer and all that, man. You know, plants set up, you know, they're not brothers. They, they're wicked men, you know. So it says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if you love Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, you're going to keep the commandments. All right. Now, when you first come in, like I said, you first come in, you know, it's not about you just keeping the law, but you have grace. You have time to learn and grow in this truth. And eventually, through your sincerity, all right, and right spirit within you that the Lord gives, you're going to keep the commandments to the best of your ability. All right. So now let's grab a few precepts in the Old Testament, which is the book of Psalms, chapter 4. Verse 4, it says, Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still, shall I. So sin not. That's straight, straight, straight to the point. Now, let me go here to the Apocrypha in the, uh, the book of Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach. All right, the 15th chapter and the 20th verse. It says, he hath condemned no man to do wickedly, neither hath he given any man license to sin. Okay? So the Lord hath not given any man license to sin. So do we make void faith through the law, as Apostle Paul said? No, God forbid. We establish the law. Okay? We, 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 we establish order. It says, he hath commanded no man to do wickedly, Neither have he given any man license to sin. All right. You know, the law governs our flesh. It keeps us from being beasts. Scriptures say he that is righteous, let him stay righteous. He that is filthy, let him stay filthy. He that is holy, let him stay holy. All right. Because really, you know, this word is only for the elect. And that's who's going to get it at the end of the day. Okay. So let's move on. Sirach. The book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 17, and verse 25. It says, Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thou prayer before his face and offend less. See? So forsake your sins. You know, you're not supposed to be eating pork, crab, shrimp, lobster, worshiping pagan holidays. The Lord is not uh, for the wicked. He's for the righteous. This is why he sent his son in the earth. All right. And sinful flesh, you know, to re to to redeem us um, from our iniquities. He was that sacrificial lamb. OK. Uh, let's get another one here. Uh, let's go into Ecclesiasticus. Right. Chapter 29 and verse 19. It says a wicked man transgressing. And commandments of the Lord shall fall into shirtleship. And he that undertaketh and followeth other men's business for gain shall fall into suits. Okay, so that's shirtleships is um that shirtleships is uh that is basically a bond, okay? Going into a bond, a bound. So you're bound with your iniquity. So a wicked man transgression and commandment. And commandments of the Lord shall fall into shirtiship. Shirtiship, it says, and he that and he that undertaketh and followeth other men's business for gain shall fall into suits. Okay, that's a portion of a wicked man. You now that's why the Lord gave us wisdom. You know, this is why He gives us life through by keeping His law. And uh, real quick, since it comes in mind, I'm gonna go to the book of. Um, Baruch chapter 4 and 1 It says this is the book of the commandments of Yahweh And the law that endure forever All that keep it shall come to life But such as leave it shall die Alright 
So this the keeping the laws all right, keeps us in the light. Who's the light? Yahweh Shai. This is why Yahweh Shai taught us to keep the commandments to the best of our ability. Okay. Okay, I get one more. This is in uh, Second Edris. Second Edris, fifteen, and uh, verse twenty-two. It says, "My right hand shall not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth." So you see, the right hand, which is uh, Yahweh Shai, being the right hand of the Lord. Okay, His power. My right hand shall not spare the sinners. Okay, you're not going to be spared. You're going to be destroyed. He says, and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. So he's not going to stop. He's going to destroy you. Okay, you're not covered. You're not, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, being saved. You're going to be destroyed. All right. And this is to the Israelites. Okay, because only ones that can actually keep the law. Okay, and be beneficial for them is the Israelites. Okay, Isaiah 46 and 3. Uh, uh, let's go, let me get it real quick. This is in the book. Isaiah 46 and 3. It says, Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. So you have to be an Israelite. Okay, in order for these laws to apply anyway. Okay, these laws don't apply to no Edomite or no Hamite or no Japhite, no no uh, Ishmaelite. Okay, it only pertains to the Israelites. And uh, thinking of another one real quick, the uh, I think it's Amos three, Amos three and one. It says, hear this word that Yahweh have spoken against you, O children of Israel, Yasha Allah, against the whole family that I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. Okay, because the law, statutes and commandments were given to the Israelites and the Lord has only dealt with the Israelites. Another one come in mind is the book of Isaiah, chapter 40 and 15. It says, Behold, the nations, talking about the other nations, are as a drop of a bucket. They are counted as a small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the owls as a very little thing. Meaning, meaning they are nothing to the Lord. You know, a small dust of a balance is nothing. If you was weighing, you know, Let's say, you know, brothers, if y'all, you know, say if um, you're weighing your herbs, you know, you might be uh, uh, beating uh, rocks, you know, and it turns into dust after you beat them up enough and then you may weigh them to package it up, you might, you know, you know, and you weigh them and it be a little left, a little dust of it on the scale, you'll blow it off. You won't even try to save it. Okay, let's read that again. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. You know, if you're carrying a, a, a pail of water and it's filled to the top and you walk, you, you walk, you're moving it and it actually spill a little drip of it. You know, you don't care about the drip. You keep moving because you still have a bucket full of it. It says, and are counted as a small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the owls as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn nor the beasts thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. Okay, so there's nothing that a heathen, okay, which is profane outside the temple, there's nothing they can do to please the Lord. There's no sacrifice that they can give that the Lord will accept. Okay, now verse 17, here's the point. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. Okay. And, uh, you know, someone want to be simple, right? Somebody want to be simple. Uh, what book is that? Okay, let me put in. Um, okay, Deuteronomy 7 and 6. It says, uh, For thou art an holy people unto Yahweh thy power. Yahweh thy power hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. 
above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Yahweh did not set his love upon you nor chose you because you were more in number than any other people for ye were the fewest of all people but because Yahweh loved you and because he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers okay Abraham Isaac Jacob it says have Yahweh brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh king of Egypt it says, Know therefore that Yahweh thy power, he is a power, the faithful power, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments. Uh oh, keep his commandments to a thousand generations. You see? So the Lord is not a man that lie. Okay, he honors his covenant with our forefathers. Okay? And it's really, it's not of us, it's really because he loved us. We didn't choose the Lord, he chose us. All right, so I know I probably done drift off a little bit, but it's still in sync because here in verse 9, it says, keep his commandments to a thousand generations. All right, you come back every third and fourth generation. Hey, when we rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, we read Exodus 12, you know, it goes into it how we're supposed to teach our children. Okay, we're supposed to carry it on from generation to generation. They're supposed to know these uh, holy days of which we rehearse. All right, so, you know, Lord willing, I believe that's it. I got more presets, but I know the lesson is pretty long. Oh, uh, let's see if I grab one more. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to grab one more here. This is a book of 2nd Edris, chapter 15, and verse 24. It says, Woe to them that sin, and keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. Okay. So there's no getting around it, man. There's too many scriptures New Testament, Old Testament, right? The Apocrypha, Yahweh Shai himself even said, keep the commandments. He said, if you love me, you will keep the commandments. So to teach men not to keep the commandments of the Lord, you are a fool and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to destroy you. Okay? Uh, another one come in mind real quick. Let me go to uh, the book of Amos 9 and 8. It says, behold... The eyes of Yahweh are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith Yahweh. For lo, I will command and I will shift the house of Israel among all nations. Like as corn is shipped in the sheaf, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. So, you know, the Lord said, his eyes are upon the sinful kingdom. And what sinful kingdom is this today? Is a is Babylon. All right. AKA America. This is the most sinful kingdom on the planet Earth. The most God forsaken wicked society. So he says, I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. And that's through prophecy. Yahweh Shai came to fulfill prophecy. If he had not come, we'll still be waiting on the prophecies which Isaiah spoke of, which was the one, which is Yahweh Shai, the word. Okay? But we're past that. Yahweh Shai fulfilled the first mission, and now he's on his second mission. And all we have to do is uh, servants, ambassadors, prophets, teachers of the Lord, messengers, is just to do our part. And that's just to teach, as our apostles teach us here at Great Millstone. Just keep prophesying. The Lord is doing the heavy lifting. Scriptures say, give the Lord no rest until he established the kingdom. So it ain't no time for break. Oh, I got another scripture coming in mind. Yeesh. But okay, it's the spirit. It says, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord, for lo, I will command and I will shift the house of Israel among all nations, because Israel is scattered. All right, and those that are waking up that are scattered, they are what? They are the hope, Lord's hopeful elect, in which we all became Gentiles. So you're going to have Israelites, as we call the speckled bird, you know, that may look like another nation, but their spirit goes back to being an Israelite see Esau don't he he's not the highest matter of fact he's the lowest because the scripture saying Obadiah he's the lowest among all the heathen and here it is you have the lowest that thinks he has any source of um source of power that can go against the very highest he's out of his mind uh Job talks about I think it's 18 or verse 20 starting at the fifth verse 
He says he's, when he's, his uh, excellence, he shall meet the height of his excellency. Then the Lord is going to throw him down, you know. So anyway, it says, uh, behold, the eyes of Yahweh are upon the sinful kingdom and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. Saving, see, he's going to save the elect that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, say of the Lord. For lo, I will command and I will shift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is shift in the sheath, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. So none of the elect is going to be left behind. All right. And that's why the scriptures say the righteous shall scarcely be saved. Okay. Even the elect is going to be afraid in that day when the earthquake and the earth shall shake to and fro, you know, being passed through the fire when the chariots deliver them, you know, right before the nuclear destruction. Verse 10, all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us so you see here it is all the sinners of my people that's possessive okay that's the lord claiming his okay which is a nation of people okay 12 tribes of israel 12 families from jacob 12 sons right all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. You're going to die by the modern day sword, the gun, bombs, bullets, whatever it is, man. Okay. Whatever the Lord appoint to you. Jeremiah 15, he appointed to you certain deaths. Okay. So by the sword, ultimately the sword is the plague, which is the Lord's ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles. Okay. That he's going to shoot off. From one continent to another to destroy Babylon the Great. So it says, which say, the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Because that's pride. You know, here they are sinning willfully. You're teaching brothers not to keep the commandments of the Lord. You are an evildoer. All right. And that develops a person to give pride to think that the Lord gave them license to sin. And the Lord did not give them license to sin as we read in the scripture. Okay. Uh, you can't say the Lord made you go off neither. All right, you have to man up and be truthful and honest and sincere in this thing. Now, real quick, bear with me, Salakia. I know it's pretty long, but I uh, hope I still have your attention. And hopefully, Lord willing, more important, edify. You know, uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 1, it says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received the mercy, we faint not. So we don't faint because the men of the Lord... Are the messengers of the most high and the scriptures and the precepts say you know give the lord no rest till he established the kingdom okay we are also habakkuk 2 where he said we are watchmen standing upon a tower waiting for the lord to say what he's going to say unto us roughly paraphrasing so verse 2 but we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of yahweh deceitfully but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of the Most High. All right. So in the sight of the Most High, how do we uh, renounce the hidden things of dishonesty for everything that goes against the law? OK. And um, sin is a transgression of the law. So everything that goes against the laws of the Most High, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, all right, is dishonesty. Okay, not walking in craftiness, being liars, deceivers, false prophets, looking for gain, fame. All right. Nor handling the word of Yahweh deceitfully, being Satan. Okay, because even Satan could quote the scriptures. It says, but by manifestation, all right, meaning come to life, come to come in the flesh. It says, of the truth, who's the truth? Yahweh Shai, which is the word which we have through his comforter, all right. That he's given us to give us the understanding, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. It says, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of the Most High by teaching them good things. How did this word get to your conscience? By prophesizing and teaching the things that are true, which comes from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, which men are being inspired and it, uh, been inspired to teach this word through the inspiration of the Lord. Okay? So, to every man's conscience that they what? Keep the law to the best of their ability. Which giving them balance and telling them also that the laws are not going to get you delivered is based on faith. But you have to keep the laws to govern your flesh. All right. It says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. All right. So guys who teaching that crazy crap, the Lord going to destroy you, man. You know, so Lord willing, I hope this lesson was edifying. I know it's long, 
I hope I didn't lose your attention. You know, for those who tune in or whatever the case may be, Lord willing, you're edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.